Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think this session is, is incredibly uh, exciting. I think this is a very, very interesting topic, and I obviously I believe it to be of great importance for the future. So I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, first of all, uh, Biasid is a joint municipal authority or a joint municipal utility in the very south of Sweden, and we provide water, wastewater services, and actually waste services to a population of around half a million people. Um, now, um, this my presentation will focus on the work done in Malmö, uh, and especially the work done in the city district of the Western Harbour. So, uh, I think what is interesting here, this is uh, Malmö is, um, well, it's in, the, in Northern Europe. Um, it it's, has a population of around 300,000 people. Um, and it was really um, affected by deindustrialization in the 80s. So um, the economy um, collapsed uh, in, in every aspect. And uh, people actually started to move away from, from the city. It was a crisis in many aspects. Um, so from this point of view, um, the term sustainability became very sort of uh, vivid for, for the citizens. And um, to find new concepts that could sort of accommodate the future was really uh, on the agenda for, for, for the people here. And um, just to, to make an illustration, I think this is rather nice. This is the Western Harbour area in 1995. It used to house uh, the most modern shipyard in the world. Um, this was closed down in the 80s, and instead a car factory was tried. <laughs> it was closed down after like 100 days, and what remains on this barren peninsula it's the big crane where the ships were built in the background and actually the car factory. But apart from that, this peninsula was barren and desolate. Right, this is what it looks today. There is one future aspect and that's the dike. But apart from that, this is really what this peninsula looks today. And I think it's quite a, 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 an interesting transformation here that's taken place. And um, obviously, it's not just engineering. It's a lot of political leadership, political courage, and vision that has taken place here. So um, when we look at the, um, the, the things that really triggered the transformation here, uh, was one idea, and again, back to the, the crisis, what is sustainability? Um, it was uh, decided that a housing fair was to be, um, uh, be held in Malmö in the year 2001. And the discussion here was on um, the city of tomorrow, the city of tomorrow. So really to find a, a sustainable city for the future. This is a very, very broad uh, context and it required a lot of discussions and this is in the mid 90s so uh, the discussion was was broad and wide and, and differed in many ways but I think one of the basic fundaments for 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 the discussion was that on ecological sustainability I, I think for a Swedish guy this eco village is quite uh, an image illustrating uh, I think to some extent sustainability and I think this conference is nice in that way it focuses on water and food right and if I may say so this is what the eco village is all about I don't think I need to talk more about the eco village this is the basic principle right but there's more to life than just eating I think we can all agree on that. And urban sprawl is not something that we want. And uh, we have already heard about the, the cities and the urban population that is growing. So really, we need to develop our cities into more sustainable cities. So from this point of view, it, it, it seemed a good idea to actually start looking at our existing cities to actually make them more sustainable in every aspect. Um, we had some tools, but um, I think from a sort of general uh, context or, or general broad uh, perspective, I think the, 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 the easy answer, what we wanted to do was to 
do this, consume less, energy, transports, land, etc. And this has implications for, for the city structure and mixed green and dense as keywords, the buzzwords. So, if we want to, to go further into to other aspects, the planning aspects, of course water is uh, a key issue here. And I think you've seen this, this figure many times now. And one of the uh, interesting features is that uh, always when you look at this picture, you'll find that my part of Scandinavia is always sort of water abundant. There is a lot of water in this region. And this again has implications because Quantity, the quantity itself of fresh water we heard in a previous presentation, it's not a critical issue. There's no competition for the water. But what we put in the water may have a big, big impact on sustainability. Is it all right to have a flush toilet? Or do we need other systems than the ones we have? So um, when we focused on, on, what, uh, on, on the more engineering aspects, on the mere, more scientific aspects, we focused on, on the wastewater side and waste side. And uh, what we discovered during this phase, which also uh, took part, uh, which took some time actually, and we did a lot of this in Sweden at the time, and uh, we found, we rediscovered the existing centralized systems for energy wastewater and solid waste management management were indeed integrated. They were interacting with, with each other already. And this, in, in, in turn, meant that uh, the, the energy system, for example, oh, sorry, the wa wastewater system was indeed, very, uh, was indeed very energy efficient for this type of environment. We also saw that there were, were things that were not or could be, be uh, uh, potentially improved. One of these things was, was uh, organic material, food waste, uh, could be used in a different way, um, actually for biogas production and, and also for, for creating this equal loop between agriculture and the city. And we also saw that with regard to wastewater sludge, which is a, 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 an old wastewater topic, uh, certainly there could be improvements uh, for, for the recycling of especially phosphorus. So when we, uh, uh, came up with, we came up with this very simplified diagram to show what we wanted to do here, and what you see here is that we said, we'll keep our waste to energy um, plant providing electricity, and district heating. It's, it's in the very low, oh, sorry, I think you can see it up there. We also said we'll keep our advanced wastewater treatment plant. We think that that could do the job for, for, for this, this time at least. But what we need to improve, what we need to introduce are schemes for um, uh, f food, food waste collection for production of biogas and um, uh, 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 a product for, for agriculture. And what we also suggested was that we were to, to, um, to, to develop a, a, a production unit for extract or for, for uh, getting the phosphorus out of the sludge to produce a phosphorus, uh, clean, clean phosphorus for, for agriculture to be used in agriculture. Um, of these ideas, I, I think what has taken place now is the biogas. That has been a, a success today. The city of Malmö introduces uh, food waste collection in the entire city. With regard to sludge management, I don't think Sweden and uh, was ready for this, uh, this type of technique, because at that time, sludge was still spread on farmland and it was seen as the best practice. So, that uh, development did not take place. Another factor, as I said, we discussed uh, a lot was uh, climate change. And of course, all coastal cities will face um, increasing uh, sea levels. And um, this is just to illustrate uh, 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 th that a city like Malmö will have to do something to protect a lot of, of uh, infrastructure, a lot of made investments. And this thinking, doing, etc., is not just a case for the water authority 
or, or the water utility. Here we need to maybe be on a national level, be on a, on a regional level at least, and uh, this will ha we'll have to strengthen our, our institutions in this regard. I think the municipalities will be there to, to push the governments to, to do something in this area because we need to, to bring this topic uh, forward. Um, I think you all know about this. This is about rain. Huh. Stormwater handling and developing cities. When you develop cities, the uh, runoff will be much more rapid and that will cause flooding, etc. And um, one of the uh, ideas put forward in, in uh, the, well, now it's been some years, but at, anyway, in, in the 90s was uh, the idea of sustainable urban drainage, that is, with open, open uh, drainage systems, etc. And here we're talking about, as we heard before, not just making uh, the engineering, uh, making a bigger pipe, but actually trying to make it aesthetic, but also to make it cheaper, to introduce these uh, solutions uh, in the city. And I've got one very, I think this is a lovely example. This is from, uh, also from Malmö, one of our early experiments. It's from Augustenborg. And what you see is uh, on the right side, yes. On the right side, you see the everyday. Uh, uh, this is a, an old residential area. And of course, it doesn't rain every day. Um, but when it rains, we have the possibility to store water the way you see in the left hand, well, well, you get left and right, right, I hope. At any rate, what, what, what you see here is more living with water to actually persuade the citizens that this is okay. Once in a while, it doesn't harm the building. It's, it's beautiful. Um, there are flies. You will have to live with flies because occasionally you can get that also. But it's, 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 it's a way of actually introducing the concept that water could be present in the city. On... Uh, in the Western Harbour, you will find a lot of these devices. Uh, they, they're for demonstration, and here you can see them very, very beautifully designed. So, yes, it's one of the concepts that we're, we're developing. Today, I think we uh, are pushing things, uh, I think uh, the, the city planners and, and also the uh, developers, etc. cetera, they, they, they are very, very fond of these things. And actually today we have to bring some, some sort of ecological aspects back to, to, to them again, that they should do a job with regard to flooding, etc. cetera. And uh, in this area, we also need to build new institutions to, to find financing of these devices, because that's a bit of a problem. I think uh, uh, it's been mentioned also. <coughs> uh -uh. Okay. So, I, we've done some calculations if these eco-cities or these models of the eco-cities are on the right way. I, I just couldn't help taking this picture. It's from Novotny. And uh, I think to some extent it illustrates, um, we're talking about population, population density, we've been talking about the eco-cities. At least we are getting evidence that we're moving in the right direction. And that is promising, I think. And um, the gospel uh, we've heard also about, um, I think We've already heard um, Ulf talk about the Tangshan Bay Eco City, and here we have an exchange program because it's not only about engineering, it's actually about understanding some of the, the basics. And uh, uh, we have an, uh, a program over three years running to, to actually explain some of these things. It's, it's also on very, very cultural things, I should say. It's understanding uh, uh, context of democracy, etc. So, yeah. And. Uh, I've also got this picture because this is probably one of the more difficult things. Uh, we have different cities in, uh, in, my, in my uptake area and, and Lund is, is, is a famous city in Sweden. It's a university, an old university city. And uh, what is happening here is that we're getting a research center for, it's, it's, it's actually on, on, of European scale, a uh, research center on, on uh, yeah, on neutrons, etc., accelerating neutrons, uh, materials, new materials, etc. And what is happening here is that they have also taken on the challenge of actually uh, bringing in, in this sort of sustainable 
uh, sustainable development to the city. And we're talking here maybe that in, in this area where they hope there will be around 50,000 people living and working, uh, that we can, can take the water, the, water the, the, the resource management issue to another level because here we are right on the rim of the agricultural land. So with that, I will conclude.